terrifyingly powerful websites, part two. This isn't really a website, this is Google dorking. Um, it's Google. When you enter your search queries with this certain, like, syntax type that I'm going to show you, it's called Google dorking. Google is great, it's a super powerful engine, um, but it has so much information. And sometimes it has information that it is not supposed to have that people have given it by accident. And if you know what to look for, you can find it, which is probably bad. Let's start first search for log files that contain username strings. Why? Because they usually contain passwords too. To start, you're going to type all in text username, and the file type we want is log. Oh no. Oh my god. Do you see why this is terrifying? I hate how easy that was. This is- I'm using Google! Mm, great, let's make it worse. Actually, I'm almost out of time, so let's make it worse in part three. Terrifyingly powerful websites, part one. Open up an incognito tab, and you're going to want to go to thatsthem.com. This is a website that allows you to search for people using literally anything that you know about. If all you have is their name, you can put that in. You can also put their zip code in. If you have their email address, you can use their email address. If you just have their IP address, you can use their IP address. Basically what it's doing under the hood is searching a bunch of places on the internet where it knows that people are likely to disclose their address or their IP address or their whatever without knowing it. it searches a bunch of those, compiles them, and gives you the results. This is super problematic because literally if you email me or give me your phone number, I can suddenly know your IP address, your home address, your mom's home address. A lot of people don't know that they're putting this much information about themselves out there on the internet for anyone for free, so be careful. Use this as a tool to keep yourselves and others safe. Part 2 is coming soon. Terrifyingly powerful websites, part three. You guys, I feel dirty. So a lot of times when people buy a webcam, they just put it on the internet on a channel that you can actually access because they don't protect it with a passcode or anything, which is actually really bad for them. But when it's on the internet, there's a certain model that has a certain string in its identifier, and you can search for that by searching in title colon in quotes webcam xp5. This is just for this model. And a really discouraging number of things come up. Great. All of these are webcams that are just open to the internet. Oh, there's literally people moving around. The owners of these webcams may or may not know that I can see everything that they are doing. But as you can see, it also gives me their IP address so I could literally just go on Shodan and look it up if I wanted to know more about them. My point with all of this is that there is a lot of stuff on the internet about all of us that we like don't necessarily know that we've given away. Any internet connection device is vulnerable. There's no privacy anymore. Protect your data. Welcome back to Terrifyingly Powerful Websites. This is part four. Today, we're going to talk about Shodan. If you liked Google dorking, Shodan is about to blow your mind. Shodan, as you can see here, is a search engine for the Internet of Things. What that means is it uses a port scanner to index different IP addresses and ports so that you can search them by word or phrase. And I do mean any internet-facing device. Your printer, your webcam, your nav system on your boat could potentially all be listed on Shodan. What makes Shodan so powerful is you don't have to know any specific phrasing to do the searches for these devices, so you could literally just type webcam and you will get results. Verbose results, I might add. A good idea might be to use it as a tool to investigate your own security by looking up your own device or the manufacturers of your devices to see if they have any known vulnerabilities listed. You can literally also follow the Shodan Twitter, because they'll often tweet known vulnerabilities. Also, if you don't want to go to the webpage, you can make an account and get a command line interface. Type pip install Shodan. Then you can do things like that. Wanna know if you've been hacked? You're gonna pop on down to haveibeenpwned.com. On this site, you can enter an email address, a domain name, a password. She goes and searches a bunch of known data breaches for your info so you know if you've been compromised. But Ray, aren't I not supposed to enter my email address on sketchy websites? I'm so proud of you! Let's dive into that! The site is run by Troy Hunt, Regional Director at Microsoft and known cybersecurity researcher. He has extensive documentation on how it works, and also some super dope FAQs on how they keep everything secure. One of the most important of these is that the email search and the password search and the domain search are all completely separate searches, so the information is never associated. Also comes recommended by my awesome and brilliant friend Crypto the Llama, who you should follow. And he has a dope video on this, which you should watch. This site is a great scanner, but obviously it cannot protect against everything or catch every single breach. Definitely not going to keep you totally safe, but definitely a good place to start if you do get an alert. And if you do get an alert, you better change that password. Mom, go forth and unpwn yourself. Fine. Terrifyingly powerful websites, part six. You have already been compromised by this one. Remember those days on Facebook when that thing would go around that was like, what celebrity do you look the most like? 
come to my website and approve this cute little security page and you'll know. And the security page was like, all I want to know is your publicly accessible information, like your friend list, I promise I'm not bad. Do you really think there was any web developer out there who was like, my only life goal is to figure out what celebrity this person looks like? No! All of those were so that we would give them access to our data so they could sell it to other people or use it for themselves on other apps or whatever that they were developing. Frankly, that is like the most innocuous thing they could possibly have been doing. How easy it is to set up a convincing fake Facebook login page. I'll do it right now. <gasps> uh oh. Except, ooh, that's a little weird. But whatever, let me just put in my info. From my end, it looks like it's just prompting me again. But over here. Mm hmm. If it seems suspicious or too stupid to be true, it is.